Annie Tempest is a whirlwind of creative energy. Her Norfolk house and the adjacent studio, the base for her cartooning career and her work as a sculptor. On one side, the desk for her celebrated Tottering by Gently series for Country Life, centred on dotty aristocrats, and on the other, the focus for her new work in bronze. As you can see, I just get completely stuck in. This one's going to be one of the conductors and it's going to be called um, Presto con Malizia. So fast, you say this hand and, and with malice, with this hand. And, and it's very, it's got an urgency in it, a leaning forward saying, you know, a supplication to the, to the orchestra. Um, and I'm just going to pop in the shoulder girdle here to, to bring the strength to the, um, to the upper body. I can feel, when I say those words, I can feel it. The tension is in this area, and so I'm going to bring that to the sculpture. It's drawing which has brought Annie to this place and the study of the human form. This new series literally came out of the darkness. I was at a concert in the Royal Albert Hall, but what really um, got me and captured my imagination for the first time was the conductor and and how was he communicating to 60 people in an orchestra with just his body with no language I was so captivated by this gesticulating guy um, that um, I began sketching and um, I they're very they're very gestural you can't have any any accuracy on this but um, I began sketching the movements that he, that, that he was making. Very simple. If you see, they're just, they're really just, just lines and almost cartoon-like, but I'm not, I wasn't trying to be a cartoonist here. I was trying to capture the gesture. So I was thinking about this, and I had these, these little drawings that were literally done with a finger in the dark uh, in my studio when David Messam came to visit. And because he's David Messam and he knows about these things, he spotted them, and he said, Annie, you're clearly a competent sculptor, but where's Annie in all this? And he said, look at those drawings, that's got Annie in them, go and sculpt that. I was only up there a day but before we'd really discussed in some depth the change in her sculpture. And I was keen to see her be more expressive, use much more of her own personality into the pieces than possibly she'd done before, where some of the sculpture is beautifully made, but quite solidly figurative. These are very expressive. I had a half life size uh, conductor made within three hours, and it had all the energy and vitality uh, that goes with not worrying about just being yourself. And I said, OK, David, come and have a look, you know, don't be shocked. Um, and um, he said, oh, my God, that's perfect. Don't touch it, send it to the foundry. And so that's what, um, that's how this series of conductors happened. All of this work, this new work, is, has happened in the last year, so that in itself is very exciting. And she's moving really out of being in a strong sort of figurative mode uh, into being very much more expressionist here, looking much more at the sort of psychology of the human being and all that type of thing. So it is very exciting. So we have the control of the music and the response to the music in the dancers. And so that is the basis of this show. It's those two areas and the music comes from the viewer in their imagination. This new sculpture is the culmination of a long journey. Annie was one of five and brought up at Broughton Hall in Yorkshire. Despite a privileged background, money was always tight, so Annie landed a job as a medical secretary, her first introduction to human anatomy. 
I used to um, love sitting there um, second guessing what their diagnosis would be um, and I became very familiar with the, with the skeleton. I didn't know anything about the musculature but the skeleton was very, very fixed in me over the six years I was working in x-ray departments. Um, and then um, I was teaching myself to draw in the afternoon, in the evenings rather, after work. I would go to Kensington Chelsea Library and get books on how to draw hands, how to draw feet, how to draw this, that and the other. Um, and slowly I was building up a, a, a drawing repertoire. And then I just became like a rolling stone gathering moss, you know, and I became a cartoonist. I've worked in the last 40 years for pretty much every newspaper and magazine in this country and quite a few abroad. I knew I had a sense of humour and I knew I wanted to draw, but I had no idea that there was a job as a cartoonist. It was just like, what? You mean I can do this? I don't have to type? This is fantastic. Family life followed and marriage to Annie's now ex-husband and award-winning composer, James McConnell. They had two children, Daisy, a renowned luthier, and Freddie, a songwriter. I'll unravel myself in your arms, my dear. I will snatch you away from the grip of crippling fear You will hold me in your heart and you will keep me safe Safe from the dark Sadly we lost Freddie to a, um, a heroin overdose when he was 18 I'm sorry but I'm not going to hide the fact that this is still painful 10 years on and I um, I sculpted my grief and some of the pieces in the show, you don't need to know the story about where it came from because everybody in life has some kind of trial. Art is what the viewer sees in it and you won't know without me telling you that this came from a massive, uh, a massive area of grief. Actually, you know, people are so busy pursuing happiness in this world but actually what we should be pursuing is wholeness and life comes with great tragedy for everybody, not just for me. I've lost a child, it's a big one. I think she's, she was you know, saying thank you for, like, for his life and, uh, and, and enshrining the, 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 the peace he hopefully has found eventually. Um, and I think they were, they're, they're lovely of their moment actually, but life, life moves on and so does the sculpture. Annie has studied hard to achieve the ability in her audience to immediately understand her message. Her Royal Majesty the Queen captured at the funeral of Prince Philip. I so keyed into that moment that's etched on, on all our retinas where she sat alone, this sovereign, in all her humanity in the church after she'd lost her one support in life, you know, that, that had been beside, at her side all this time. And, you know, that keys into any of the grief sculptures that I've done. It's a very quiet image, obviously, because the Queen's at prayer and it's Prince Philip's memorial service. But um, uh, it, it really says everything about Annie's, Annie, Annie's ability to catch a moment. Annie, in a way, is already great. Um, you, you need the sort of cognoscenti to accept her as being a great... Uh, um, a, a, great, a great artist, but she's a terrific free spirit and I think she'll find her way to the top, certainly. It's rare Annie takes time out, her innate creativity always in action. But at the end of the day, we all need to rest. I'm nervous, of course I'm nervous. This is putting my head above the parapet with something that's so very, very poignantly me. A, a bit like a conductor, um, it's an art, and sculpture is too, and I wanted to make this show as sculpture as performance. I just hope people like it, and, and I'd love to hear what music they hear in each of the pieces. <laughs>